so the fact of the matter is, I don't really know how I'm going to do a tutorial because I used to just film it on my uh, Mac laptop, but I have a new laptop now, I'm not really sure how I'm going to be doing that anymore. I used to make vlogs and other stuff on a YouTube channel, but now I'm just like, I don't know how to continue because I could film it on like a camera camera, not my phone camera, which I'm using now, but well, ramble, ramble, ramble. Anyway, I guess you guys want to know how to make yarn wigs, which is pretty cool. Uh, they are super easy to style. Like, I'm just using my fingers and it's just like, hey, look at that sticky yappy cockatiel hair. <laughs> but yes, making wigs is time consuming, let me tell you. Sure, there are a lot of steps. There are not many steps, but you just have to repeat them over and over again. So basically, I'm working on a wig right now. You'll need a weaving cap, which is basically, you can see this, it's just, it's kind of like a wig cap, except not really. It's made to fit your head better, and it's adjustable on the end, on the back, and stuff. And so, yeah, it has a mesh, so you can sew hair and stuff into it. So, what I use is yarn. And you might ask, how does yarn end up looking like this? Well, it takes a bit of time and effort. Not too much, but it, it's going to take you a bit of time, let me just say that. So, basically, what I do is I cut pieces of, piece of yarn into about this length. Depending on where you're placing it, you'll want to cut it longer, shorter. Like, in the back, usually a bit shorter, but in the front longer. Depends on what kind of wig you're wanting to make. I wouldn't really suggest doing one that's super long because it would it would be pretty hard, I would think, to brush out a really long strand of yarn and it would just take a lot longer. So if you're going to use a set method, probably short-haired wigs, I wouldn't go much longer than like, I don't really know, I haven't made one longer than this. So if you want to try it, go ahead and tell me how it works. For this, you're going to want to have a few things. A uh, straightener, it can be any kind, I have a weird one that has like a little rolly thing. Um, Probably, definitely, some scissors to cut the yarn with and trim the hair and stuff. You'll also want to have, let's see, I have it somewhere, somewhere over the rainbow. I have a better one of these somewhere, but uh, this one is a good example for now. You usually brush animals like cats and stuff with them. But yeah, you'll probably want one of these because it makes brushing the yarn out so much easier. And that's basically what you're going to be doing. You're going to be cutting pieces of yarn and then tying the little knot in the middle and then brushing them out. After that, you're going to straighten the heck out of them and then sew them into your uh, little weaving cap. And you will need a weaving cap. I got this one at a store, but you can probably find them online for not that much. So yes! You also likely want something to brush it, brush the yarn out on, because, yeah, you're gonna be doing a lot of brushing. You don't want to do it on, like, your lap or anything. You'll probably want a uh, old pair of PJs, which is what I use, and my uh, Moira, she uses a pillow. So yeah, I would highly suggest getting something to brush it out on, because, especially if you're using one of these things, they have little wire things, and... These things can hurt if you brush, like, your skin with them. Um, I've drawn blood, and I, my friend has drawn blood from using them. So, yeah, be careful when you do this. Also, you're going to probably be using uh, needles, and needles are sharp. You can poke yourself. Be careful. Needle, probably some strong thread, I would suggest. I think this is, like, embroidered, actually meant for <laughs> some sort of embroidery. But thick thread, relatively. So, the hair will stay in there. This is the inside of my wig cap I'm currently working on. See all of that, that thread holding those in there? I usually do my best to make sure they don't come out because I spend so much time putting these in and I don't want them to fall out because that's no fun. Once you start cutting meat, cutting pieces of yarn, the yarn I like to use, by the way, is called uh, I Love This Yarn. It's a Hobby Lobby brand. It's probably my favorite kind. You can use other kinds if you want. It's all up to you. But yes, that is what I like to use. So what you're going to do, you're going to want to tie this little piece of yarn and not. It's easier if you have more than one hand. Currently I'm filming with one hand and trying to tie this with another, which is going all right, I guess. I'm going to use my whoops to tie this. Mm. Yeah, you're going to tie it into a tight knot. And yes, you're going to now brush it out. You can do it in more than one bundle if you'd like um, at a time, which is a good thing because you're going to spend a lot of time doing this. Just let me tell you. And you're going to brush it out. And normally you would use a hand right here and a hand on this and brush it out. But I'm filming, so, huh, kind of hard to do that. I'm going to do that real quick, and yes. <sighs> but yes, when you finish brushing, it should look something like this. And you're going to brush both sides of it to make sure that knot is still in the middle. Don't brush that out, because you will be needing that. And it will look basically like this once you finish. And with that little knot still in the middle. And then you're going to straighten the heck out of this. Depending on the type of yarn, you might want it to be higher or lower. I'm just going to do a medium setting. Wait for this to warm up a little bit. And, uh, straighten some yarn out. Once you do that, it'll basically be ready to be sewn in, and yeah, pretty great. If you say you wanted to make sort of more of an afro sort of wig, or something, one that's not like super straight, then you probably could um, just forego the step of straightening. But I like 
my wigs to not look like afros because I don't want to, I don't have any person I want to cosplay who has an afro. So, you got your brushed out yarn and your, you got your brushed out yarn and your thing. So, you're just going to be like, hey, get that all brushed out. And then what you're probably going to want to do is keep doing that, except do it not on your fingers because it's blah, but I don't actually have, I'm standing up and doing this right now, trying to demonstrate. But you just want to keep on doing that until it feels silky and soft. And yeah, you just want to keep on, keep it on. Keep brushing. Brush on my pants, even though it's a bad idea. But yeah, it looks a lot smoother, but you'll just want to keep doing that until it's super, super smooth. Super, super duper smooth. You'll want to trim the uh, edges a bit because it'll have like little tiny flyaway fibers and you don't really want that because it'll just, it'll get in your eyes and crap and it's annoying. But yeah, you'll do that to both sides and then you'll be ready to sew it in your wig cap. I suggest doing these in like bundles. So like cut a bunch of yarn the lengths you need it, tie all the yarn, brush all of it out, and then iron it. And then your next step would be to sew it. So I'm going to do that. You've got your thread and a uh, needle as well. Oh wow, that's bent. A bent needle. Alright, you're gonna want to thread that through. And hopefully you don't have trimmers like I do, which makes it pretty difficult. But then, yeah, you can do that. I usually like to do it pretty long because I usually tie in a groups of about 30 or more pieces at once. So yeah, you're gonna want to get some, some thread. You definitely don't want to get too long because then it's gonna be hard to tie off. Because you have to thread it in and then once you run out of thread or start getting close or just want to take a break from sewing, then you're going to need to tie it off in the wig. So yes. Ah. And you're going to want to make sure, I don't know how much you guys know about sewing, but make sure you have a little, little knot. Little knot. Alright, so we got our, our wig. And right now I'm doing like the part, it's like a circle bit. So I'm doing, this is the front of the wig. So I have been doing that part recently. I'm going to go from the inside of it. You can turn it inside out also if you want to. But the inside, basically push it through. Make sure that the uh, the knot is on the, that, that side. Um, usually I try and go back and stab the needle through the knot. So the, there's just no way that it's the knot's going to go through. Which this needle kind of sucks. But you can also just do it through the... Since we doubled the um, thread up, we can just go through that. And yeah, we got that. So now that we've got your piece of thread secure, we're going to start tying yarn up here. So we're going to make sure it's on the outside, because right now it's on the inside of the wig. So just stick it through. Not like that, but just yank it right out. Stick it through. And once you have it on this side, where did I put my yarn? Oh dear. Dear me. And here we go. Yarn. So get one piece. And what I like to do that little, uh, that little knot, you're going to want to go through it with your needle. Go through the knot. I usually, uh, do this a couple times because I want to make sure that it stays in. But once you, uh, stab that in, then you can just pull it to the edge. And then usually I try and go through the mesh again and also through the knot. And then just go through it to where it's on the inside. And just pull it. Just pull it that thread in. So now we got another piece of yarn in here. I bet you can't really see what I'm doing at all. But then you're going to uh, push that needle back in and just do another, another piece of yarn. Um, usually I try and make the front the thickest part and then the sides and the back a little bit thinner, spaced out. You know, if you've ever, if you actually have a wig, you probably know how the lefts go. They usually go in lines. So the first time, this is my first wig I made, the one I'm wearing right now. I don't know how, I didn't know how wigs work. I didn't have a wig, so I was just like, hey, let's just try this. And let me just tell you, the back is way too thick and the sides gave me hard, the sides were really bad. But I really love this wig and I learned a lot from it. And I'm hoping the second wig will be so much better. Right now it doesn't look like much. But hopefully with more time and effort, I will do the thing. This looks so dumb. I look like Solix already. <laughs> but yes, put it on a lot while working on it. You'll probably want to trim it also while you're wearing it as you're working on it. Um, so, and also, if you like marshmallow hair, it feels like your hair is made out of marshmallows. It's easily styled, but also, if you're going to be running around, you're probably going to want to figure out how to work product in this hair. I have not tried putting product in my hair yet, but...
basically, yeah, that's what you do. You just keep sewing, you keep cutting yarn, you keep tying it, you keep brushing it, and then you straighten it, and then you sew it in, and then it's great. It's, it's, it'll look exactly maybe like that. <laughs> and so definitely, definitely, definitely need to brush your wig because it'll look really dumb when you first put it on, but with a little bit of brushing, it's just like, <laughs> But yes, basically, if you want to, if you don't have the monies, and you want an anti-grav wig, and you have lots of yarn and time, then I think this is a good route to go. Um, so yeah, I would highly suggest trying it out, and then telling me how it works out for you, because I'm curious. I don't know anyone else who makes wigs this way. Oh so, yeah, let me know how it goes.